Hey booktubers, this is Michael Romeo and I'm here to talk about books because that's what we do here on booktube and it's a fun thing, it's a good thing. Another quiet night here at the hotel where I work so I'm able to get a little more content put up and today I am starting something new. I'm starting a series that I'm going to carry on for a while, probably one video a month dedicated to this and it is an author spotlight and each time I do it I'm going to spotlight one of my favorite authors and talk about the books I've read by them talk a little bit about their career and maybe get the other people interested in reading their works so today the first one one of my favorite authors of all time is James A. Mishner man he wrote some books oh he wrote some books he uh, lived from 1907 to 1997, was a World War II naval officer, and has a, he, he wrote 40 books in his career, the first of which, and I love this, the first of which I haven't read, is The Future of Social Studies, Proposals for an Experimental Social Studies cu Curriculum. I think I'm going to pass on that one. Um, I may, if I decide to, that I'm going to have a complete collection of James Mishner books, I may seek out a copy just to have the complete collection, but I don't think I'm actually going to read a social studies curriculum, ex experimental curriculum outline. But anyway, I just thought that was really interesting that that was his first book. Um, his first novel, uh, Tales, from, Tales of the South Pacific, was a Pulitzer Prize winner in 1948 and it also went on to inspire the Broadway musical South Pacific. Uh, I wonder how he felt about that because his, his book was a lot more serious than, um, than the uh, musical turned out to be. Although it did give us some good songs, I mean Some Enchanted Evening, you know, great song. Anyway, um, I discovered him when I was about 12, maybe 13 years old. Had to do a book report in school and uh, we had to pick one of the books off the teacher's bookshelf in the classroom. And I just went over, pretty much reached out blindly and grabbed the first book because I really was not into doing this. Um, the book I grabbed was The Bridges at Toko Ri, which was uh, a book by James A. Mishner and loved it. I mean, I, I felt like I was a fighter pilot in the Korean War and taking on all the challenges that they took on and just absolutely loved this book. And I've read it a number of times since. Um, at least half a dozen times I've read this book. And for whatever reason, I never went on to read more of his works. Uh, every time I wanted a James A. Missioner read, I picked up Bridges at Tokori again. And uh, it wasn't until um, I met my roommate, and this is my roommate when I was in my mid-twenties, and um, this roommate eventually became my best friend, and eventually, even beyond that, became my wife. Um, she recommended to me while we were at the roommate level that I read The Source and she handed me a copy of it and um, thank God it was paperback because the hardcover um, would, would be, the hardcover was huge and the paperback was huge but not as heavy as the hardcover. Um, the Source is an amazing novel. Uh, it starts out with an archaeological dig in Israel at a place called Tel Makor. And you follow the archaeological dig, going down level by level by level, and the artifacts that they find at each level. And then eventually you get to an artifact that is obviously a Stone Age artifact. And at that point, the novel turns around and you meet the people, the Stone Age people, that left that artifact and you start your way back up through the levels of the dig. And each level you, you meet the people who left the artifact that was found at that level and their lives and their story. 
And through this layered story, you get the history of the Jewish race, the history of the Jewish religion, how they go together, the culture behind it all. Um, it takes you all the way up to the conflict between the Jews and the Palestinians, the fight for uh, an independent Israeli state. Um, just, and I was amazed that somebody pulled this off and kept it interesting through every page. Um, I've read that book just like the Bridges of Tokori, I've read the source several times, at least three or four times. And um, I, I will probably read it again. Uh, from that point on, uh, I just went on to read more James Missioner, just one book after another. I was surprised to discover that I've only read 14 of his 40 books. Um, we already know I'm not going to read one of them, which is the the curriculum outline. Um, we'll just leave that one as a nice little piece of trivia. But um, also on the list of books that I've read by him is Hawaii. And Hawaii, he does a similar thing that he did in the source, but in this one, uh, he takes us all the way back to uh, prehistory, to the shifting of the geological plates that resulted in the Hawaiian Islands. For the first, I don't know, 100 pages of the book, you have, as my wife puts it, the islands come up, the islands go down. The islands come up, the islands go down. And it keeps on like that for several billion years, or 100 pages, and until eventually the islands come up and stay up. And then the people arrive from another Polynesian island and the story takes off and we have the same kind of uh, history reveal that he did in the source and this became a format of his uh, through a lot of his writing. Um, another one I read, but the one that to, the, to date is my favorite missionary book is Caravans, uh, which was um, a look at the cultural changes taking place in Afghanistan following World War II. And uh, it's told through the story of a diplomat who is hired to track down the missing daughter of a senator uh, who had, and she has disappeared into the desert with her Afga Afghanis Afghan husband. Um, and and the, the again he just spins a tale that carries you along and and takes you from one event to the next to the next to the next and i was absolutely amazed by this book and um, i couldn't put it down and like i said it's my favorite james a missioner book to date uh, i've also read centennial which uh, same type of thing he did with the source and with Hawaii he does with Colorado. A um, lot of American history in that one and uh, an just another tour de force for layer history. Uh, Chesapeake, he does it again with the Chesapeake area of the East Coast. Uh, Delaware, Maryland, um, we have migrating geese from Canada following their migration all the way down to the Chesapeake, uh, Ches Chesapeake Bay. We have the shipbuilders as they started uh, building ships, obviously, um, in the Chesapeake area and how that grew. And the going through the, um, the Revolutionary War and the Civil War, and, uh, again, up into contemporary times. And then there was The Covenant, which he does the same thing again with South Africa. Um, we, we have the natives living in the South African region and the uh, colonization by the Dutch and by the British takes us through the Boer War, takes us through apartheid and how it came to be and how it was broken. Um, 
I, I'm going to keep using this word riveting, riveting. His writing is riveting, no matter what he's writing about. It's, it's just, it grabs you and it holds you and it makes you turn the pages and find out what's coming next. His next one that I read um, was Space, and uh, he does it with the space program, starting in, in World War II, uh, following the life of a scientist, and some odd noises here in the hotel tonight. Um, anyway, um, the space program, Space, by James A. Missioner, yeah, back on track. Um, it starts with World War Two, takes you um, all the way up to uh, the 1980s, and uh, a fictional um, launch to explore the dark side of the moon uh, and all the stuff that happens in between. It's it's fiction, but again, it, it's also history because he he presents. The story of the, the place, the story of the, the uh, in this case, the space program, um, through the fictional characters. And then Texas, awesome little book. Well, no, did I say little? No, it's a James A. Missioner book. It's not little. Awesome big book um, about Texas and how it became a state and all the, all, all the, action and adventure that happens in Texas um, uh, right up again till contemporary times Alaska he does it again this time with the the state of Alaska and what life is like there and uh, this one he does again like he did with Hawaii he goes back to the geological formation of, of the land route that once joined um, Asia with the United States and or the American continent I should say and um, he, he has a see we experience through him um, the season where there is you know no sunlight basically sun comes up and down within a matter of an, of an hour uh, for several months of the year and we also have salmon fishing industry, we have the explorers, we have the, the, the search for oil, we have all the stuff that happens in Alaska. Uh, and then there's Caribbean. Um, you're getting, you, you've got the notion here, I'm sure. The Caribbean islands and everything that happens there, there's so much history that took place in the Caribbean islands and, and he pulls it all together into one fascinating story. Um, then we have Journey. Journey was interesting. It was actually um, supposed to be a, a part of Alaska, but was cut out. I don't know if it was cut out because of length or for other reasons, but it became its own book. And it's a shorter one. Uh, it, this one is not a, book, a doorstop. Um, and it's about um, some British men going to Canada and crossing Canada in the attempt of finding gold in Alaska. And that is a grueling book. Um, what they go through is not easy to read, um, but it is fascinating. And then we have the novel, and he brings his template to the life of a novel. We see it through the viewpoints of four key people, the writer, the publisher, the editor, and the critic. And we get, get the life of a novel from the spark of an idea through an actual published work being sold out to the public. The Eagle and the Raven is the last book I've read by him. And um, it's about Sam Houston and Santa Ana and their conflicts uh, in Mexico. Um, I believe this was also supposed to be part of, of Texas and like Journey was a part of Alaska, uh, was taken out and made into its own book. Uh, so those are the 14 that I've read. Um, I've got one that is on my to be read list. Uh, if you saw the video I did 
a couple of videos back about movie tie-ins, books that were the basis for movies. Uh, there's one in there called Sayonara, which is a James A. Missioner book. And surprise of surprises, um, I discovered that he may have had more of a personal uh, inspiration for writing Sayonara, which is about an American soldier who uh, falls in love with a Japanese woman shortly after World War II. And come to find out, surprise of surprises, James A. Missioner's second wife, who he married in 1955, was Japanese. So, how much of that book was semi-autobiographical? Um, we can only wonder, but I'll bet you it was a good portion of it. Uh, so that's James A. Missioner. If you guys haven't encountered this man's writing, you really have to try it. Um, whether it's one of his smaller books, he's written a number of, of normal length novels like The Bridges at Toko Ri and Sayonara, The Fires of Spring, The Drifters, um, or whether it's one of his doorstop novels. Uh, just, just start reading James Mishner because he is a transporter for you to other times, other places. And he's one of the reasons I'm excited about reading, that I got so excited about reading um, as a kid when I read Bridges, Bridges of Tokori, and then again as an adult, when I discovered this whole new notion of a novel that can encompass spans of generations and tell you a story about a place or, or, or a, a, a piece of history. Um, so that's my passion for my first author for an author spotlight and um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button. Um, if you're a subscriber, thanks for coming, coming back and joining me again. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe, become part of my tribe. Um, we just have a good time here. Uh, I'd love to see you all in the comments, I'd love to hear what you have to say. Have you read James Mishner? Are you interested in James Mishner? Um, go ahead and tell me about it in the comments. If there's somebody that you think would be interested in this that is just hasn't been to YouTube and doesn't know about BookTube, go ahead and share the video with them. Um, and until next time, I bid you uh, a joyous, joyous whatever's happening in life. I hope it's great for you, and we'll see you again soon. Bye.